about setting goals. Let me show you something to turn me every way but loose. I've never been the same since I found out about it. Learning how to set goals. Not long after I met Mr. Shelf, we're having breakfast one morning. Mr. Shelf said, Mr. Owen, now that we've gotten acquainted, we know each other fairly well. He said, maybe one of the best ways I can help you. He said, let me see your current list of goals. Let's go over them and talk about it. And I said, what? I don't have a list. He said, well, Mr. Rohn, if you don't have a list of your goals, he said, I can guess your bank balance within a few hundred dollars, which he did. And that got my attention. I said, you mean my bank balance would change if I had a list of goals? He said, drastically. So that day I became a student of setting goals and I've used it to dynamically affect my life. I've taught it to some of my business colleagues. We use it to do business around the world. Setting goals. It can turn out to be a drama for your life. Here's what goals are. Your vision of the future. Your vision of the future. Now there's two ways to face the future. One with apprehension. Number two, with anticipation. Guess how most people face the future? With apprehension. Why? Major reason why. They don't have it well designed. They've left the design of their future to somebody else. And if you don't make plans of your own, guess what? You'll probably fall into someone else's plans. Guess what someone else may have planned for you? Not much. If all of your negative relatives all turn positive, what'll that do for your future? Not much. If prices come down a little, what'll that do for your future? Not much. If the economy gets a little better, what'll that do for your future? Not much. If circumstances get a little better, what'll that do? Not much. If the weather gets a little better over the next few years, that'll do? Not much. I mean, you can go right down this whole scenario list. Most people all their lives with their fingers crossed count on this not much list. That's why 10 years from now, they'll be driving what they don't want to drive, living where they don't want to live, wearing what they don't want to wear, doing what they don't want to do, having what they don't want to have, maybe become what they didn't want to become. And it all starts by counting on something that's not going to count much. You say, well, then how can my life dramatically change? You got to count on yourself. And here's one of the things you got to count on your ability to design the future. It's called the promise. And the promise of the future, if you'll design it well, can have an awesome effect on your life. But if you face the future with apprehension, you'll take hesitant steps all day, uncertain steps all day. And if you take uncertain steps all day for six years, you can imagine how empty your life can be. We got to help our kids with the promise of the future. Now here's what's connected to the promise, the price, the price to pay. But I'm telling you, the price is easy if the promise is clear. One of the better notes to make for today. The price is easy if the promise is clear and powerful. But the price seems almost too much to pay, too much to get over, too much to accomplish if the promise isn't clear, if the promise isn't powerful. I'm telling you, kids will pay the disciplines if they can see the promise. One of our biggest challenges as parents in the 90s is to help our kids see the promise of the future. That's why I'm teaching financial independence, how to become wealthy and powerful and sophisticated and healthy and unique. All of the stuff kids would hope to go for. It's all possible. This is America. That's the promise of the future. The price, a few simple disciplines practiced every day. And I'm telling you, the kids will pay the price of the simple disciplines if they can see the promise of the future. But if they can't see, they don't want to pay. And the same is true of all of us. We will pay the most extraordinary disciplines if we can see the promise of the future called setting goals. So I'm asking you to get a handle on the future. I'm asking you not to leave it to anyone else. Not don't leave it to the company. Company's got their own goals. I'm asking you to set your own goals, your personal goals, income goals and financial goals and health goals and spiritual goals. And where do you want to go? And what do you want to do? And what do you want to see? And what do you want to be? That's it. Promise of the future. Design your own future. It's within your hands and your capacity to do so. Here's how simple now goal setting is. It's not mysterious. You don't have to anchor, you don't have to focus, you don't have to visualize, none of that stuff. Here's how simple goal setting is, changed my life. 
decide what you want and write it down. I mean, that's how profound this stuff is. Decide what you want and write it down. Make a list. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to see? What do you want to be? What do you want to have? What do you want to share? What projects would you like to support? What would you like to be known for? What skills would you like to learn? Some extraordinary things you'd like to do, ordinary things you'd like to do, right? Silly little things you'd like to do, very important things you'd like to do. Decide, decide on all that stuff and write it down, write it down, write it down. That's how simple this stuff is. And it's your own private list. If it's really private, you know, on your list, put some stuff in code where nobody can understand it if this list <laughs> fell into unfriendly hands. And simple things, whatever. Foolish things, doesn't matter. It's your list, your list with you. I keep my list in my journal so that I can go back. Five years ago, here was my list. And I'm a little embarrassed. Here's what I thought was so important now. How my philosophy has changed from 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago. Here's my old list. Here's my new list. Here's what's valuable to me now. Here's what I want my life to be now. Here's where I want to go, what I want to do, what I want to see. Keep your lists of goals so that it shows your growth, shows your ability to change and grow. Your philosophy grows and expands what's valuable. Setting goals. It doesn't matter how small, foolish it is. Put it on your list. My Japanese friend, Toro Ikeda, put on his first list, a Caucasian gardener. Good morning. <laughs> I thought that was good. I like that. Have you got this profound thing now on setting goals? Here's how profound it is. Decide what you want and write it down. Get together with your wife, decide. Get together with your kids, decide. Get together with your business colleagues, decide. Write it down, make a list. Okay, that's how easy it is. Now let me give you one more scenario on setting goals. When I started making my first list, Mr. Shope said, Mr. Rohn, looks like we're going to be together for a while. He said, I've got a suggestion for you. He said, I think one of the first goals you ought to set, you're 25 year old American male. Sure, you've made some mistakes, but now you're on the road to better things. You got a family worth it. Reasons makes the difference. And he said, you've got every reason to do this. He said, why don't you, among all the goals you're going to set, said, why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? A millionaire. This is America. All the possibilities are available. Why don't you set a goal eh? to become a millionaire? So it's got a nice ring to it. <laughs> millionaire. Enough zeros to impress your accountant. Millionaire. And he said, here's why. Now I thought the man doesn't need to teach me why. I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great to have a million dollars? He said, no, that's not it. Here's why. And I had one of the greatest lessons I ever learned, and I'm about to share it with you. This will be worth the price of being here today if you can capture what I'm about to share with you. What I'm about to share with you changed my whole life. Here's what Mr. Shove said. Set a goal to become a millionaire. And he said, here's why. For what it will make of you to achieve it. And I got one of the greatest classes in one sentence I've ever received in my life. Set a goal that'll make you stretch that far for what it will make of you to achieve it. What a brand new reason for setting goals. What an all encompassing challenge to have a better vision of the future. What for? To see what it will make of you to achieve it. And here's why the greatest value in life is not what you get. The greatest value in life is what you become. <laughs> Major question to ask on the job is not, what am I getting here? That's not the major question. The major question to ask is, what am I becoming here? It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become that makes you valuable. So Shelf said, set a goal to become a millionaire for what it will make of you to achieve it. Then he said, when you finally have become a millionaire, now he said, what's important is not the money. I thought, wow, I've got some more to learn. <laughs> he said, no, no, Mr. And I'm telling you honestly, you could just give the money away. Now, I did better than that, right? I told you. I lost it all. <laughs> I'm rich by the time I'm 31. I'm a millionaire. I'm broke by the time I'm 33. So I didn't have to give it all away. I lost it all. <laughs> Foolish mistakes I made. That I'm a farm boy from Idaho. That early money drove me bonkers. 
I used to say, how many colors does it come in? I'll buy them all. I went crazy over that first money. I just went crazy. And then I made that one foolish mistake, right? Continuing guarantee. I mean, you know, I'm so naive off the farm. I don't know what continuing means. And a few other mistakes. And by the time I'm 33, I'm broke. Now I've made and lost millions since then. But what an experience that was. And I'm telling you, the man was right. When I finally was broke at age 33, guess what I discovered? My money did not mean that much. It represented only a fraction of all my assets. Shove said, once you become a millionaire, Mr. Rohn, you can give all the money away. Because he says, what's important is not the money. What's important is the person you've become. A whole new concept on setting goals. Now there's two parts to this, and then we're wrapping up goals. Here's the first part now on this goal setting for what you become. Number one, don't set your goals too low. Interesting, we teach in leadership. You'll find it on the cassettes. Don't join an easy crowd. You won't grow. Go where the expectations are high. Go where the demands are high. Go where the pressure's on to perform, to grow, to change, to develop, to read, to study, to develop skills. I belong to a small group. We do business around the world. You cannot believe the expectations at that level. What we expect of each other in terms of excellence, far beyond average. Why? So that we can each grow, so that we can receive from the group, we can contribute to the group, something unprecedented. It's called living at the summit. Go where the demands are high. Go where the expectations are strong so that it'll provoke you, push you urgently, insist that you not remain the same for the next couple of years, the next five years, that you'll grow and change. So don't set your goals too low. The guy says, well, I don't need much. Well, then you don't need to become much. Now here's the last part on setting goals. Don't compromise, don't sell out. There were some things I went for back in those early years that I paid too big a price for. If I'd have known how much it was gonna cost me, I never would have paid, but I didn't know. So don't sell out. Ancient phrase says, count the cost, count the cost, count the cost. An ancient story says, Judas got the money. You say, well, that's a success story. No, no. It's true, 30 pieces of silver in those days was a sizable fortune. You say, well, if a guy's got a fortune, right, that's a success story. No, you don't understand. His name was Judas. Doesn't that ring a bell? Judas. You say, oh yes, Judas, Judas, the traitor. That's right, the traitor got the money. Doesn't that change the story? And the answer is, of course, it changes the story.